Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisay Shashanyavadi Paschacha Dejatarine Vanchakalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadara Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 You know you haven't let me share the screen Okay, we're on lesson number eight, but before we go to lesson eight, a quick review of what we covered yesterday. Significance of the divisions of 64 angas of sadhana bhakti. 64 angas, there was 10 very important things you're supposed to do and 10 very important things you're not supposed to do. Then there was 44 others. Right? You can see there. All right? So that's there. 64 angas. Then five effective means of the most effective items of sadhana bhakti. Five, this is a, five very powerful items. They're all in the morning program. If you follow the morning program at the temple, then you'll get all of these things. Association with devotees, Sankirtan, hearing Bhagavatam, looking or living in Mathura or living in Mayapur and worshipping the deity. So all of these items are there in the morning program. You go to the morning program, you can enjoy that. And then the significance and relevance of the first three items. The first three items were all in relation to the spiritual master. Taking shelter of a spiritual master, inquiring from him, rendering service. Like that. And then the importance of avoiding nama parad in one's practice of Krishna consciousness, the ten offences. We must chant with care and attention, right? But, okay, we looked at that verse, all right. And then the relevance, we spoke about not accepting unfit disciples and constructing many temples. And we said, the, the, the disciples must be fit. There's no harm in accepting disciples if they're fit. They must be qualified, they must chant, they must follow the regulated principles. They should wake up in the morning, they shouldn't sleep all morning, they should get up early in the morning. And constructing temples, if we have money, then we construct temples. We don't have money, we don't, we don't worry about it, the important thing is preaching. But if we have money, we can use it to build a temple. Of course, we don't stop book distribution. We have to also distribute books. And then difference between principles and details. We, we can change the, the details. We cannot change the principle. So the principle is always remember Krishna and never forget him. All right, so we spoke about that yesterday. Okay, going ahead. Sadhana Ninda, Sadhu Ninda. 
Sadhu Ninda means offending a saintly person, a sin, a, a, offending a devotee. So who is a devotee? Principal characteristic, surrendered to Krishna. Wait, let me put this proper. Who is a devotee? The main thing is they're surrendered to Krishna and his name. And the other things, 25 qualities. But the main thing, they're surrendered to Krishna. That's the most important thing. A devotee means somebody who's surrendered to Krishna. And what does surrender mean? Do you remember from your Bhagavad Gita? Bhaktavatsa Prabhu, what does it mean to be surrendered to Krishna? I feel like I know, but I'm not sure right now. Yeah, you studied the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, surrender to me. I, I was absent. Or, I or you, you were absent? Okay. What about, um, what about Shashi Khan Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, there is verse in 18th chapter, 66th uh, verse, Sarvadharman Parityajya, Maam Ekam Sardam Vriya, Aham Tam Sarvapapibhya Mokhe Sanam Atujaya. So Lord says that to give up all kind of uh, other duties and uh, so-called religion and just only take shelter of the Lord. And then uh, Lord will take free us from our simple reactions, our simple reactions. So what does surrender, how do we, how do we surrender, what do we have to do? So Maharaj, uh, basically, uh, being obedient to his instructions, Krishna's instructions. So, well, I don't you remember? There are six items for surrender. Oh, okay, okay. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. So, Sankalpas, uh, uh, mis mis accepting favorable. Yes. And rejecting, rejecting which is not favorable to Krishna consciousness. Yes. And Having full faith that Krishna will always protect me. Yes. And uh, not caring for the maintenance of how we will keep body and soul together. Okay. And and then, uh, Miss uh, Humility Maras, complete humility. Yes. Yes. And there was one more. Uh, no desire it's except Krishna's no desire. Ah yes, Maras. Fully aligning with yes. Okay, right, good, yes. <coughs> okay, 25 qualities of Lord, from Lord Chaitanya's teaching to Sanatana Goswami. Here you can, something about it, secondary characteristics. <coughs> Devotees are always merciful, humble, truthful, equal to all, faultless, magnanimous, mild, and clean. They are without material possessions. They perform welfare work for everyone. They are peaceful, surrendered to Krishna, and desireless. They are indifferent to material acquisitions and are fixed in devotional service. They completely control the, the six bad qualities lust, anger, greed, and so forth. They eat only as much as required, and they are not inebriated. They are respectful, grave, compassionate, and without false prestige. They are friendly, poetic, expert, and silent. From the Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela, Chapter 22, 78 to 80. This is Lord Chaitanya's teaching to Sanatana Goswami. Hmm. All right. So, Shashi Khan Prabhu, you can read this. Yes, Maharaj. Sadhu Ninda. If one has the principal qualification of surrender to Krishna, but if he does not have all of the secondary qualifications to the full extent, he is still considered a devotee. As one continues chanting 
the secondary qualifications eventually fully manifest. Mm. So the main one is surrender to Krishna. So if he has that, the others are not so important. The others will come gradually. Yeah, keep reading, Shashi. Yes, Maharaj. If we, if we criticize him, be a bad feeling toward him, towards him, or hear him criticized, we are involved in Sadhuninda. Blaspheming a devotee incurs the anger of Krishna. Mm. Mm. So we don't want to criticize a devotee. That's very bad. Upon him, okay. Should I, should I continue, Maharaj? Yeah, go ahead. Contracting Sadhuninda hearing. Upon hearing blasphemy first, one should defeat the opposing party by argument. All right. So we hear blasphemy. If we hear it, then we can challenge it. We should try to defeat it. If you're a good preacher, if you're good in arguing, then you can defeat the, the opponent. Second, if he is unable to defeat the opposing party, one should give up his life. Yeah, if you're not good, if you can't defeat them, you have to give up your life. Third, if he is unable to execute the ever mentioned two processes, one must leave the place and go away. Right. If a devotee... It, so we don't, we don't like you to give up your life because you're devotees. We need devotees, so we don't want you to give up your life. Number two is not allowed. But number three is what you should do. You should just leave the place, go away. If a devotee does not follow any of the ever mentioned three processes, he falls down from his position of devotion. The nectar of devotion, first page of chapter 9, third paragraph. Mm -hmm. so, so we should... We have to learn how to act in these situations. Somebody comes and criticizes, blaspheming Krishna or Krishna's devotees. And we just go away. Go away. Leave the place. Go away. If we don't go away, then it's not good. In Kali Yuga, it's not a good idea to try to defeat them because people don't admit they're defeated. You may yes, argue please. with them. They will never admit they're defeated. They'll keep arguing. So the best thing is just to go away. Just avoid them. Yes? Shashi? Contracting, contracting Sadhu Ninda hearing. <clears throat> the instruction set forth here in Srimad Bhagavatam is that one should not tolerate at any cost the activities of a person who vilifies or blasphemes an authority. If one is a brahmana, he should not give up his body because by doing so, he would be responsible for killing a brahmana. Therefore, a brahmana should leave the place or block his ears so that he will not hear the blasphemy. If one happens to be a kshatriya, he has the power to punish any man. Therefore, a kshatriya should at once cut out the tongue of the purifier and kill him. But as far as the vaisyas and sudras are concerned, they should immediately give up their bodies. Sati decided to give up her body because she thought herself to be among the Sutras and Vaishyas. Srimad Bhagavatam 4.4, 4th 4, canto, 4th chapter, 17th verse per quote. <laughs> so this is in relation to the pastimes of Sati with her father Daksha. So, the point is, better to go away. We don't need to do like Sati, we don't need to burn ourselves, but just leave that place, go away. Don't, we don't want to waste time and argue with people. Mm -hmm. Contracting Sadhvaninda is spoken. First, one must recognize one is being blasphemous. Raghunath Das Goswami 
gives an example of how one mistakes something bad or something good in discussing someone who's bathing in who's bathing in as urine and thinking that he is cleansing himself sometimes we discuss the faults of a vaishnava and we are thinking that actually this is a very good discussion and after and very purifying to analyze these faults for the sake of clarifying issues to push on the movement mm. <laughs> okay so we were doing the previously we were doing counteracting sadhuninda when we hear something by hearing, but now we're talking about if we actually speak something, if we speak something which is bad. So, Raghunath Goswami gives this example that if we think something is bad, or we, if we think something, if we mistake something bad for as being something good then this is like taking bath in ash urine. Now if you take a bath in the urine of an ass, it's very bad, you know, ash urine is all poisonous, it's all horrible, you know. So if we think we're getting clean by bathing in the ass, you know, cow urine is, at least cow urine you can drink it and it's medicinal, but ash urine, very bad. You know, and if you put it all over your skin, you'll get a lot of pain and a lot of sores on the skin that will be very harmful for your skin. So we don't, we don't use ash urine, but if we criticize something, we think something is actually, if we're thinking this is good, actually it's not good, it's bad. So, so sometimes we talk about the faults of a devotee. So to talk about someone's faults is not good, it's not good. But if we think, oh, this is very good, we're having a very good discussion, we're, very, <laughs> we're getting purified by hearing about the faults. No, it's not good, it's not the way. We, we don't help our Krishna consciousness movement by talking about people's faults. But sometimes we're thinking, oh, this is very good, we're having a good talk here, I'm really, I agree with them, you know, like that. And we talk about the faults, we talk about bad things. It's not Krishna consciousness. Maharaj, I have a question out here. Really? Like, yeah, like sometimes uh, some uh, senior devotee is criticizing another senior devotee and uh, suppose I am there and he's saying me, about that uh, senior devotee and now I know that it's bad now I just can't leave that place also because if I leave that place that person will get offended and I have to hear that also so what to do in that case well you have to make some kind of excuse to get away from it if you stay and hear it and you know you say this person is senior so if he's a senior person, he shouldn't be talking bad about someone else. He may be senior in the movement, but it doesn't mean he's actually senior in realization. True. So you have to, you have to uh, save yourself. You have to save yourself and make some excuse and just go away. You don't want to hear a lot of criticism. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, sometimes we find that uh, there are certain people, uh, they dress themselves in the guise of devotees and then sometimes they happen to, they have because they have some misunderstanding about the philosophy and so what happens, they mislead the devotees, innocent devotees in the community. So is it proper to cause on the devotees about that person? Yeah, somebody mis... If someone's misleading the devotees, then it's not good, is it? Of course, you have to be careful who's doing it. Yes, my If somebody's senior to you, you know, maybe you report it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. 
You can always do that. You report it to another senior devotee. Okay, Maharaj. Yeah. And let the other senior devotee take care of it. Okay, Maharaj. Don't try to do anything yourself because yes, you're yes, not, if you're not in the position, then you'll simply create a, some, some quarrel, you know, the, they won't like it. And they'll say, who are you to tell us, you know, who are you, you're not even initiated yet. You know, and you're coming, you're telling me what to do, you know how long I've been in this movement, and you're telling me what to do, you know, huh? what right have you got to do this, you know. It will come like that, you know, it will be an unpleasant situation. Yes, my Lord. So you have, we have to learn, you know, when is it, sometimes it's proper and sometimes it's not. So it's, people who are above you and who are in more senior position than you, don't try to instruct them. Yes, my Lord. Because it will just create troubles. But just understand that, you know, this is not right. and. In the future, you know, maybe you, if you want, you can always report it to another senior man. Mm -hmm. You can always report it to another senior devotee. But don't try to imitate. You don't want to imitate the senior people. Yes, yes, yes. So dealing with people, you know, it's always a problem. You just have to be careful. The main thing is you don't want to hear and you don't want to get involved with it. It's better to just stay away. Now, if, if they're really off, in the future, Krishna will take care of it. Krishna will create. And you can also report it to the GBC. Sometimes you can report it to the temple president or the senior managers. You can report it to them. You know, this happens. It's unstable. I had this problem this morning already. I had a class earlier. I had the same problem. Network is very unstable. Okay, keep reading. Shashi? Hare Krishna? Hare Krishna? Hare Krishna, I think Sashikan Prabhu also got the same problem. He's also in Mayapur. Oh, yeah, he's, he's also. He's downstairs. <laughs> Shashi, are you Shall there? He's disconnected. Ah, he's coming. He's coming. Yeah, yeah, he's coming back. Okay, I'll read. Yeah, he's back. Okay, counteracting sadhu ninda, spoken. Sometimes it's, it's hard to distinguish the devotional creeper from the weeds. Kutinati is a weed of duplicitous behavior and or fault finding. Raghunath Das Goswami compares it to bathing in ass urine. What is bathing in ass urine? This fault of kuti nati or being duplicitous in your behavior or in finding fault with others. So finding fault is not business of devotees. Devotees should, we should find the good. We should see the good, find the good in people and praise that. If people would write to Prabhupada, if you wrote to Prabhupada and complained, your Prabhupada, this devotee, no good, or that devotee, no good, Prabhupada wouldn't like it. Prabhupada would say, this is the neophyte tendency. The neophyte tendency is to find fault with others and to complain about others. But one who is more advanced, one who is in a better consciousness, he will find the good and he will praise the good and he will talk about the devotees, how wonderful they are, how nice they are. So if you wrote to Prabhupada and told Prabhupada how the devotees are so nice and they're working so hard and they're so enthusiastic, Prabhupada would be very pleased. 
But if you wrote to him telling him, oh, these people, no good, they didn't, they do like this, they, they don't get up in the morning, they don't go to Mangalarti, they don't chant the runs, Prabhupada would be very unhappy. Oh, it's, he would feel very sorry that the devotees are doing like that. I'd say this is the neophyte. Neophyte sees the faults, but the advanced devotee will see the good. Right? Melin? Melin? Yes, yes Maharaj. Are you there today? I'm there. I'm right here. Okay. Did you hear what I said? Yes. All right. So we only see the good in the devotees. We don't see faults. Right? Yes. Yes. Duplicitous behavior. Duplicitous means we make a show of devotional service. We make a show, we pretend we're doing devotional service, but we're not pleasing Krishna. Why are we doing, what are we doing? We make a show, we want people to see, I'm a very good person, I'm doing very well, I'm, people should see what, what I'm doing, they should thank me, they should respect me. So people make a show, of the duplicitous behavior, their purpose is not to please Krishna, but to get some honor or praise, so people will respect us or think we are very pure. We find fault with others to make our position more by making others' positions less. Oh, wait, that's an important point. We find fault with others. And how do we do it? We say, I'm very good. And we say, that other person, they're very bad. We we'll say, I'm doing so much. I'm working so hard. That other person, oh, they're lazy, they're dirty, they're no good, they're useless. They, 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 but they say, me, I'm very good. I'm very clean. I'm working very hard. That other per those other people, oh, they're no good, they're useless people. That is not good. We shouldn't think like that, right? We should see our own faults. We should say, I'm very fallen, I'm very bad, I am no good. But they're good, they're all good. Do you understand? Yes, yes, I got it. Yes, Maharaj. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna does Kaviraj. He wrote the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and he has written there Jagai Madai Haiti Munise Papista, Purushera Kita Haiti Munise Lagista. Right? Do you know the meaning, Surashan? Yes, Maharaj. You know, in Jagai Madai Haiti Muni Se Papishta, what's the meaning? Jagai Madai Haiti Muni Se Papishta. They are the sinful in the of the men. Jagai Madai. Yes. It's saying, I am more sinful than Jagai Madai. Than Jagai Madai. And then he said, Purushera Kitahaiti Munishi Lagista. Purushera Kitahaiti Munishi Lagista. I am more sinful than Jagai and Madhai. Anyone who utters my name, they will also become sinful. Anyone who hears my name, they will lose their pious activities. And every day when we go to see Panchatattva, we are singing Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Koramore 
Toma vina ke dayalu jagat samsari. Naratam das is saying, if you have come to claim, yes? Do mercy on us. Do yes. mercy on me. Yes, I am very fallen. You have come to deliver the fallen souls, so you should deliver me. I am very fallen. Okay, this is the meaning. So don't find fault with others. See our own faults. To become free from sadhunanda. How do we get free from offending the devotee? What do you think? How will we get free from sadhunanda? Chaitanya Jeevan. Well, Vibhu Chaitanya. He is absent today. Oh, he's absent today. Oh, okay. So, who's there today? Is Elias there? And uh, I heard all, the only way is to ask them to forgive one. Oh, <laughs> you have to ask from the devotee. I've, I've never heard that before. I don't know <laughs> who told you that. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, to become free from sadhu ninda, what should we do? Read. Talked about self? Okay. One, we should beg forgiveness from the devotee in such a way that we, he'll be pleased to forgive us by approaching him with humility, glorifying him, and serving him. Amen. Two, avoid the association of non devotees and materialistic devotees. Excerpt, excerpted from Giraj Sami's BIA in after devotion class. All right. If, so we offend somebody, we have to go and beg forgiveness. You have to go to them and you beg them to forgive you. And if he's a devotee, if he's a devotee, he will forgive you. See, oh no, no, no problem. No, please don't worry. And we should also... We should also avoid the association of non-devotees. We, we need to get the association of devotees. But even materialistic devotees we should avoid. All right, now we're going to speak about offering prayers. And there's different ways in which we offer prayers. Here's one type of making a prayer. It's called vignapti or submission. So it's described there, by making entreaties, by ma that means talking, by making prayers and talking to the Lord with words, the bolt on the door of liberation is released. So just by making this uh, entreaty, by talking to the Lord with words, that you can, it can open the door to liberation. You can go into the spiritual world. So vignapti are personal prayers expressing one's sentiment to Krishna in three ways. Three different ways we can express our feelings to Krishna. First of all, sampratan atmika, ex expressing one's heartfelt desire for bhava or spontaneous devotional service. Now this, this would be very nice for devotees, expressing our desire for bhava and spontaneous devotional service. Right? You all have that desire? Sanjamadaji? Sanjamadaji, are you there today? Yes, Maharaj. Yes? Do you, do you express your prayers? Do you offer prayers to Krishna like this every day? Not every day, Maharaj. But some days, eh? Yeah. Yes. And do you, do, you, do you also pray for Bhava? Crying for Krishna while chanting, yes. Yeah? 
You're crying when you chant for Krishna? Well, I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd like to have that kind of love for Krishna? So we have to pray, we have to have the desire. We have to pray to Krishna, give me love for Krishna. Mm. Okay. Maharaj, Maharaj, yes. like when we, offer, when we offer bhoga to Krishna, then we express our desire so that uh, Guru Maharaj give, gives it and Krishna has the food, accepts the food. So that something. What do you mean? We mean like when we offer bhog, but when we offer bhog to Krishna every day, bhoga, so we uh, we just pray that he accepts the food. That's also this thing. That we pray that we accept the food, or we pray to no, Krishna. No, Krishna, Krishna accepts the uh, uh, food which we offer to Krishna. Well, that's, but that's not some pratan atmika. Okay. Because there's some, prant, some pratan atmika is, ex, we have to have the desire to get bhava, or at least raga, raga bhakti, spontaneous devotional services, raga bhakti. So we want to develop that more advanced mode of devotion. It's not just asking Krishna to do something. But it's, you know, what, do we, what can we do which will help to make it better for us? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, Maharaj. Okay. You can read, Sudarshan? Yes, Maharaj. Examples, examples of Sampratthanatmika. Uh, My Lord, I know that, the, that young girls have natural affection for young boys and that young boys have natural affection for young girls. I am praying at your lotus feet that my mind may become attracted unto you in the same spontaneous way. Jai! The young boys and the young girls, they have a natural affection. So that's why we keep them apart. <laughs> So, we want our mind will become attracted in the same manner. So that's a prayer. This is Sampratan Admika. You want to become attracted to Krishna. Okay. And then there's another one. Huh? Vigna, our proposal, shall I read? Yeah. Uh, our proposal prayers. Expressing one's sentiments to Krishna in three ways. Sampartanamika uh, Atmika, expressing one's heartfelt desire for bhava or spontaneous devotional service. Number two is Dhyano Dhyano Dhika, expressing one's insignificance before the deity. Yes, insignificant before the deity. Example of Dhyano Dhyanya Vodhika. My dear Lord, there is no sinful living entity who is more of a sinner than myself, nor is there a greater offender than myself. I am so great, greatly sinful and offensive that when I come to confess my sinful activities before you, I am ashamed. <laughs> the Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 9. Okay. So that is expressing how we are insignificant before the deity, right? Number two, expressing our insignificance before the deity. So here he's saying, there is no sinful person, more sinful than me. One time a devotee came to Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada, I'm the most, I'm the most fallen. And what did Prabhupada say? Anybody know? Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> Prabhupada Prabha says that you are most of nothing. Yeah, you're not the most anything. You're not the most anything. So, 
You can say I'm fallen, but you can't say I'm not. I'm the most fallen because. <laughs> but here it said, I'm a great. There's no greater offender than myself. So this is actually. <laughs> I don't know what Prabhupada would think. <laughs> But the hum humility is there. I am so greatly sinful and offensive when I come to confess my sins before you, I'm ashamed. So that's very nice. Example of what is not. Jaya uh, Vodhika. For a whole week, I may commit to admit my sinful activities so that I can become washed off and again begin my sinning. The Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 9, Submission, 3rd Paragraph. Mm. <laughs> so for one whole week I may do sinful act and admit my sins to get free of all my... and then again begin my sinning. So this is what is not, this is not Dainovodika. This is not, a, this is not, so don't get confused. This is an example of what is not this mood of being very fallen. But there's one more, Lala Samayi, expressing one's desire for a specific spiritual perfection, involves realization of one's eternal relationship with the Lord. Right? Do you know your eternal relationship with the Lord, Sudarshan? Hare Krishna. Do you know your rasa with Krishna? Eternal relationship. Yes, I am the part and parcel of Krishna. Yes, but did Krishna tell you that? No. Anyway, we should have a desire for a, a relationship with Krishna. And so that desire, you want to, we want to know our rasa with Krishna, that is called lala samai. You have a desire to achieve some kind of spiritual perfection. An example of lala samai. Go ahead, read. My, my dear Lord, when shall that day come when you will ask me to fan your body and according to your pleasure you will say you just fan me in that in this way all right you just fan me when shall that day come when you will ask me to fan your body and, and you will say, you just fan me in this way. So Krishna will come to us one day and ask us to fan him. And we should be willing to do it. Wouldn't you like Krishna to come and ask you to fan his body? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And Krishna will, Krishna will say, just fan me in this way, just do like this. Oh, we're so lucky. That's the perfection of our life, right? Absolutely. Let, me, let me find Krishna's body. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Some Prathan Atmika belongs to someone without the appearance of Bhava, whereas Lalasa or Laulyam belongs to a person who have manifested Bhava. Commentary. All right, someone without bhava, lalasa or loyam, someone who's got bhava. So you can see which one is higher. The lalasa. Yes, the one who's got bhava, he's on the higher platform. Some pratanatmika. You haven't got bhava, not yet. 
But the one who's got lalasa or loya, they've already got bhava, they're already advanced. Another example of Lala's Mai. My dear Lord, O Lotus Eyed One, when will the day come when on the bank of Yamuna I shall become just like a madam and continue to chant your, sorry, like a madman and continue to chant your holy name while incessant tears flow from my eyes? The Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 9, Submission, 5th paragraph. Mm. So this is different kinds of levels of offering prayers. We should offer prayers, right? We all pray to Krishna every day. When we pray to Krishna, we can pray these different levels. So there's submission. Lala Samayi means you've got a longing, you've got a great desire to get something, right? What is the desire? I want to chant your holy name with tears flowing from my eyes. I want that, that there will be tears flowing from my eyes. So they have a desire, that's Lala Samayi. This appears to be a prayer, uh, some pratha. Uh, some pratharthana uh, of someone who has not manifested bhava since he is praying for it. However, when a prayer uh, is filled with similar longing expressing such bhava even, even though not attained, it is, it is also called lalasa. This is actually an example of raganuga bhakti. Oh, this is an example of Raganuga Bhakti. So Raganuga Bhakti, that is like Raga Mark. That is higher than Vaidhi Bhakti. This is Raga Bhakti, spontaneous. So the mood, is, he has a longing, he has a desire, he wants it very much. Although he hasn't got it, but he wants to get it. So this is Raganuga Bhakti. Raganuga Bhakti is that's higher than Vaidhi Bhakti. Spontaneous mood. Is is Lalasa or Lal Laulyam relevant to your personal practice of Krishna consciousness? Lalasa or Loyam, right? Let's see, Lalasa. It is also called Lalasa, even though not attained. It's also called Lalasa, Lalasa Mai. Here, some Pratanatmika belongs to someone without Bhava. But Lalasa or Loyam belong to a person who has Bhava. So you have to have bhava to to you have to have, you should have bhava in order to do this loyam or lalasa. You have to have loyam. Right? So what is this relevant for your personal practices? What do you say, Subodha Mai Keshavi Madhaji? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, Lalasa, yes, it is relevant to our personal practices of Krishna consciousness, but uh, uh, personally for me, I don't have that experience, Maharaj, of uh, crying for, um, I have the desire, yes, but I still don't have, I don't know how to cry for the Lord yet. I still pray that uh, you know, I'm still engaged in his service. It's very, it's very, very abstract still. So I still don't have experience, but yes, it is, um, I mean, having understood the meaning, it is relevant. It is, it is, it is important that we develop that. Um, yes, bhava. right. Yeah, we want to develop that. Loyam, greed, right? You want it very badly, you're greedy for something. 
that you will cry to get it. You want it so badly, you'll cry. Oh, Krishna, no, I want, I want, I want to get love of Krishna. We want it very badly. That's, that's very good, that you want something very bad. Then you'll try, we'll try very hard to get it. The nectar of Thank the... You, yes? Maharaj, in this connection, uh, regarding uh, crying for Krishna, I was remembering in one of the lectures, Jabataka Maharaj was saying that uh, we should cry uh, for Krishna, and if we cannot cry, we can, we can, if we cannot cry for him, then we should cry that I am not able to cry. <laughs> we should... And in this way, Maharaj, uh, he went on reiterating it, and at the end he concluded that we should start somewhere crying. <laughs> yeah, we should start somewhere crying, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Gorgovinda Maharaj, Gorgovinda Maharaj used to say he wants to create a school for crying. To teach us how to to teach us how to cry for Krishna. All right. Now we want, we want you to look at your book, chapter ten, and next to the last paragraph of chapter ten. Right? Who can read it? Yes, Maharaj. S second last paragraph. Yes. Like in India, all Hindus, that paragraph? No. No, chapter 10, right? Yes, chapter 10. Oh, sorry, chapter 10, yeah, yeah. Chapter 10, yeah. He would daily execute similar performance, right? No. Chapter 10, oh, I'm in the wrong chapter, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, he would, go ahead. Yes, he would daily execute similar performances as his routine work and he continued to do so for many, many years. Then one day the Brahmana imagined in his meditation that he had prepared some sweet rice with milk and sugar and offered the preparation to the deity. However, he was not very satisfied with the offering because the sweet rice had been prepared recently and it was still hot. This preparation, sweet uh, preparation, sweet rice uh, should not be taken hot. The cooler the sweet rice, the better its taste. So, because the sweet rice had been prepared by the Brahmana very recently, he wanted to touch it so that he could know whether it it was fit for eating by the Lord. As soon as he touched the sweet rice, rice pot with his finger, he immediately was burned by the heat of the pot. In this way, his meditation broke. Now when he looked at his finger, he saw that it was burned and he was wondering in astonishment how this could have happened. Because he was simply meditating on touching the hot sweet rice, he never thought that his finger would actually become burnt. I, I don't quite see what the relevance is with this text, you know. I don't know. Okay. Oh, yeah. This shows okay, so read this. 
this shows how the lord uh, lord is all pervading in spite of his being locally situated in his abode although the lord was present in vaikuntha he was present also in the heart of of the brahmana when he was meditating on the worshiping process thus we can understand that that things offered by the devotees even in meditations are accepted by lord and they help one achieve the desired result the nectar of devotion chapter 10 last parallel all right so that's in relation to offering prayers right the, the lord is hearing our prayers is all pervading is in everyone's heart so if we offer a prayer or we're worshiping the lord we're praying for something the lord knows about it the supreme personality of godhead Jan janardhana is bhava grahi or accept or appreciative of the sentiment for him a path made with actual jewels and the path made of mental jewels are the same uh, though subtle mind is also matter so any path indeed anything for the surface of the service of the lord whether it is whether in gross matter or in subtle matter is accepted equally by the supreme personality of godhead the lord accepts the attitude of his devotee and sees how how much uh, he is prepared to serve him the devotee is at liberty to serve the lord either in gross matter or in subtle matter mm. all right so krishna is described bhavagrahi that he doesn't worry about what's actually offered it's the the mood or the the feeling that the love which we have so Prabhupada talks about the path, just like there was one devotee, so he heard that Lord Chaitanya was coming, so he began to decorate the road. In his mind, he began to decorate the road, he began to put flowers along the roadway to make it nice for Lord Chaitanya. He did it in his mind. So it was subtle, but Lord Chaitanya appreciated. So we do anything, it may be physically or it may be just in the mind, but it's accepted by Krishna, it's the same. Because Krishna knows the attitude, so he sees how much the devotee wants to serve him. So the devotee is free to serve Krishna, either physically or subtly. Pure devotion is uncontaminated by the moods of material nature. Ahaituki aparahita, the unconditional devotional service cannot be checked by any material condition. This means that one does not have to be very rich to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even the poorest man can equally serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead if he has the pure devotion. If there is no uh, ulterior motive, devotional service cannot be checked by any material condition. Regarding Nara, uh, Nishimananda Brahmachari from Sri Chaitanya Chaitanya uh, Madhya 1.161 Purport. So pure devotion is not influenced by the modes of nature. It's pure, it means there's no passion, there's no ignorance. So it's described, ahaitaki apratihata. What does that mean? Who knows ahaitaki apratihata? Bhaktavatsal Prabhu, do you know? I don't, sorry. Ahaitaki apratihata, who knows? Sarvamai Keshavi Matavji? Yes, Maharaj. Ahaituki apratihata is unmotivated and uninterrupted. Right. Unconditional devotional service cannot be checked. Means you you're not doing devotional. You don't do devotional service just to get something, and you do it all the time. You're always serving Krishna. And 
And then Prabhupada said, you don't have to be very rich to serve Krishna. Even the poorest man can serve Krishna. Who was a very poor devotee? But he had pure devotion. Who was that? Little avatar, do you know any poor people who were devotees, pure devotees? Little avatar, are you there today? I can't hear anybody. Is Naraini there today? Naraini? Yes, Maharaj. Can you give an example? A pure, uh, who was poor, but he was a pure devotee? Uh, Maharaj, uh, there was an old lady in the Chaitanya uh, Charitamrita um, who fed uh, Mahaprabhu. Um, But I'm not able to remember the name, Maharaj. There was an old lady who fed Mahaprabhu. And she was poor? Really? I don't know this pastime. Anyway, who's, who, are, who were poor in Krishna Leela? Sudama. Yes, Sudama. Sudama Brahman was very poor, right? He was a pure devotee. Yes. yes. And who was poor in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes? He was selling bananas. Yes, right. He was poor, very poor. His house was all holes. He was poor. He, and, but he always spent half of his income for the service of, of Mother Ganga. Remember that? Every day he would go to worship Mother Ganga and he would, he would spend 50% of his income to worship Mother Ganga. So he was very poor. Were there any rich devotees of Lord Chaitanya? Yeah, before they retired, they were rich, right? Yeah. Yes. And also, Maharaj Prataparudra was the king. Yes. And also, Pundarik Vijanini was the land landholder, big, big estate. Okay. And then there was Suklambar, Suklambar Brahmachari, who was very poor. He would go begging. He would just beg some rice in the street every day. And Lord Chaitanya came to eat prasadam. And he said, oh, this is the best rice I've ever tasted. Because he had begged it, he'd begged it, it was all the, it, actually it was the worst rice, but he had begged it to give, and when he cooked it for Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya said, oh, this is the best rice. So even the poorest man can serve Krishna if he has pure devotion. He doesn't, he doesn't want anything. So devotional service cannot be stopped by the material condition. Devotional service doesn't depend that you have to have money, or you have to be rich to be a devotee. No, anyone can serve Krishna. These are some examples, right? Devotional service is independent of material situation. Attitudes towards suffering. Yes. My, may I continue? Yeah. yeah. My dear Lord, my dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to be, uh, bestow your causeless mercy upon him, all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past 
misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisance with his heart, words and body is surely eligible for liberation, for it has become his rightful claim. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.14.8 The Nectar of Devotion Chapter 10 Expecting the Lord's Mercy this, this is a very important verse. You often hear this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. That you ha we have to... How, how, what should be our mood when we have suffering, when we have difficulties? So what should be our mood? We should wait for the mercy of Krishna. And we should continue suffering. And we should think these are the reactions of my past deeds. But we continue to go on and serve Krishna. Then that's very good. That is very good. Okay, so? Attitude towards suffering, purpose of creation. Rectify Jiva's tendency to enjoy without Krishna. <laughs> right? We want to enjoy without Krishna. This is our problem. So, the creation is to correct that. We should, not, we should not want to enjoy without Krishna, we should want to enjoy with Krishna. So we want to change that. The punishment for a sinful activity is designed to curtail the mentality that produced the activity. From Bhagavad Gita 18.6 is, we understand that a devotee no longer suffers the reaction of karma. Mm. So just like if the, maybe the, the sinful activity was smoking cigarettes, right? So the punishment will be to stop you doing that. You get a punishment which will stop you from wanting to smoke cigarettes. I don't know what punishment you get, but <laughs> maybe I mean the what what the mentality that produced that activity, the mentality that produced that activity is we want to enjoy, we want to control, we want to be relaxed or something. <laughs> But why do people smoke? They, they think it's social, they think it's social, it's good company for others. Others are smoking and you should smoke with them. So they will smoke cigarettes. So you get punished to stop that. We shouldn't want to just smoke just because everybody else is smoking. That is like following people to hell. If everyone's going to hell, you're going to go to hell too? No, there's so many people don't go to hell. So, from Bhagavad Gita, 1866, what is that verse? Who knows, 1866? <laughs> So does a devotee get karma? Uh, no. So does a devotee get any reactions for his sins? No, he doesn't get any reaction because he surrenders everything to Krishna. Well, he but he may suffer. Still devotees suffer. Yes. He may suffer from his past deeds. So why does the devotee suffer? From uh, his, last time from, you from, told that example of the fan revolving when you switched off, uh -huh. the, uh, the fan revolves. So uh -huh. our past deeds, those things we suffer so that we purify more. Okay. A devotee, a devotee is not suffering karma. But he, he will get difficulties, he'll get suffering, you still get some difficulties. Why? I mean, we see the Pandavas, they suffered a lot. Why did the Pandavas suffer? We 
increase their level. Yes, who's speaking? Little avatar, Did that, was that you? Yes, I said to increase the love for the Lord. Yes, it could be like that, to increase their love for the Lord. It could also be that Krishna wants to show us, Krishna wants to show us how devotees react when they have difficulties, when they have suffering. And we shouldn't think that because we're devotees there won't be any suffering. Just because we're devotee doesn't mean that we won't suffer. We, we can still get suffering. That will, it can still be there. But we have to tolerate. We have to go on. And Krishna doesn't say, oh, you become my devotee, you won't suffer. But it's not karma. It can be for our purification. Because the more, su the more, the more we suffer, then the more we will take shelter of Krishna, as you say. And when we're in difficulty, we'll, we'll think more of Krishna, we'll pray to Krishna. So it increases our attachment to Krishna. So sometimes Krishna puts the devotees into difficulty so that they can surrender more. Yes? You can read? Since the, uh, since the devotee may still maintain the remnants of his previous sinful mentality, the Lord removes the last vestiges of the, of the enjoying spirit by giving his devotee punishment that may resemble sinful reactions. Ah. So the devotee still has the remnants of the previous sinful mentality. Sinful mentality was smoke cigarette, right? He'll, why does he smoke cigarettes? He thinks, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying this cigarette, you know. I want everyone to see I'm enjoying, I'm smoking cigarette. So we have that mood. That is, that is the enjoying spirit. So Krishna wants to take that away. We, we should not have that mood to try to enjoy separate from Krishna. So Krishna, he doesn't give karma, but he gives punishments that may look like karma. It may look like sinful reactions. So he gives some punishment. It's Krishna arranges directly, Krishna arranges the punishment for the devotee to take away their attachment to sinful activities so that they, we won't want to do it anymore. Okay, do you have any experience like that? Anybody? Did you get any mercy from Krishna like that? Take away your enjoying mood? Sitala? Yes, Maharaj. Did Especially Krishna... in China, sometimes sometime I, I like to take some snacks from uh, outside, some vegetarian. Then after that, uh, I get so much stomach pain anytime. Even I go outside and then I get stomach pain and then I understand this is Krishna's mercy. He don't want to go outside for take anything. <laughs> so also send me to my home and then only here you want to go to a restaurant, only they send him Pasadam. <laughs> Hi Krishna. Oh, so you don't eat outside any food? Yeah, especially in Mayapur. Also, uh, here we only take uh, Maha Pasada shops. So they are all Pasada. But in China, sometimes that uh, when I finish my duty, then I would like to take something from outside. So I will get stomach pain. Oh, you, um, you will get I stomach think... pain. Oh. Mm. Huh. I think this is Krishna's mercy. He only allowed me to take pasada at home. Oh, very good. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Anybody else? Did you get any karma, any reactions, punishments from Krishna to stop, to get you to stop enjoying, <laughs> to stop your sinful habits? Anyone? Nobody wants to say, eh? You're all shy. But 
Krishna gives these punishments, he gives it sometimes when we are suffering, it's to, to purify us, to take away our desire to enjoy. One devotee was, was distributing books and he was, a, he was a very good book distributor. And he would, he would do very good. He would distribute a lot of books and collect a lot of money. So one day he was distributing a book and he offered the book to the one man. And the one man just punched him in the face. So what did the devotee do? The devotee just, the devotee, he could have fought him. He could have had a big fight. But he thought, you know, I'm a devotee. I should tolerate. So he said, thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. He, he saw that Krishna wants me to be humble. He thought, I, I'm thinking I'm the doer, I'm thinking I'm distributing many books. So Krishna wants me to know I'm not the doer. I'm just an instrument in his service. So when he got hit, he just said, thank you, Krishna. Okay. All right, who's going to read? Let's, um, uh, Bhakta Vatsal Prabhu, can you read? Yes, Mark. Attitudes towards suffering. This suffering is not technically a karmic reaction. It's the Lord's special mercy for inducing his devotee to let go of the material world and return to Godhead. Since a sincere devotee wants to go back to Godhead, he willingly accepts the Lord's merciful punishment and continues offering obeisances to the Lord with his heart, words, and body. Hmm. Yeah. Recently, we had one devotee here in Mayapur. He, he was from America and he, he, he had a house here in Mayapur, but he'd gone back to America. His name was Rajendra Nandana Prabhu. He was a big, tall man. And he was a very wonderful devotee. He would come to classes. He would give classes and he would uh, preach a lot. He, he know, knew the philosophy very well. So it happened, he'd gone back to America and he got some health problem. And he went to the doctor and the doctor told him that you have cancer. And he told him it's in the fourth, it's at the fourth stage. So when he heard this, he told all the devotees, he said, he said, don't pray for me to get better. He said, just pray that I can remember Krishna. And a couple of weeks later after that, he left the body. And the whole time he was just chanting and remembering Krishna. And, he, and when he heard he'd got that disease, he said, he said, oh, he said, I've got a ticket back home. I've got a ticket back home. And he was, he was, he was actually rejoicing. He said, oh, I got my ticket. I got my ticket to go. <laughs> and and it, he, he left the body two weeks later. He saw it as a, he saw it as the mercy of Krishna, that Krishna was sending him back to Godhead. So a devotee wants to go back to Godhead and sometimes you get these things, you get disease and like that. So it's Krishna's arrangement to take you back out from the material world and take you back to Godhead. Or you could say, to go on with your service. Sometimes you serve Krishna in one place and you go on to another place to serve Krishna. So that's also another, another situation. Sometimes Krishna thinks, you've already been in this place long enough, you can go another universe and serve Krishna there. Because we need more devotees in this other universe, so you go there and preach. So that's also Krishna's mercy. Krishna doesn't want us to get too attached to one particular place. So the material world is like that. 
We cannot stay in one, any one place for any length of time. So we can accept it as Krishna's punishment. But it's an opportunity for us to increase our love for Krishna. So do devotee tolerates mercy of Krishna, not karma. Devotees, the devotees who have surrendered to Krishna, they don't have karma. Of course, you have to surrender to get rid. All right, read. Just as one cannot approach the sun without becoming fire, one cannot approach the supreme, pure Lord Krishna without undergoing a rigid purificatory process. Just as a legitimate son has to simply remain alive to gain an inheritance from his father, one who simply remains alive in Krishna consciousness, following the regulated principles of Bhakti Yoga, automatically becomes eligible to receive the mercy of the Personality of Godhead and be promoted to the Kingdom of God. Sridhar Swami's commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam 10.14.8 report. Alright, so this is that verse which we looked at earlier, Tate Nukampam Sushamikshamana. So the Acharya is explained because at the end of the perp at the end of the verse it said it says mm, Sadaya Bhak. Daya Bhak means you inherit the property of the father. So if your father is a rich man, Bhaktavatsal, right? Your father may be a rich man, what do you need to do to inherit his property? Stay alive? Yes, right. You just have to stay alive. And you wait for your father to leave the body, right? When your father leaves the body, then you inherit all of his property and all of his wealth. So in the same way, we have to stay alive in Krishna consciousness. We have to stay following the principles and at the same time, wait for the mercy of Krishna. Even though sometimes it may become difficult, may become tough, we get some problems and things go wrong, maybe health problems, maybe other problems, economic problems, social problems. But you have to, you have to stay alive in Krishna consciousness and then you can go back to Godhead. All right, you can see the picture, you know the story. Mm. So Gajendra is there with the crocodile. And the crocodile's got his foot. Gajendra can't get free. And all the other elephants, all of his wives and his baby elephants, children elephants, they're all there and they're waiting. And it's a long time, they're fighting and fighting. And the crocodile won't let go. And Gajendra's in agony. But Gajendra was very eager to see Krishna. And then when he saw the Lord coming in the sky, we can see in the painting in the sky, there is Lord Vishnu on the back of Garuda. And so although Gajendra's in pain, with a feeble voice, he offered respect to the Lord. So a devotee does not consider a dangerous position to be dangerous. For in such a dangerous position, he can fervently, fervor, fervently pray to the Lord in great ecstasy. Thus a devotee regards danger as a good opportunity. Tate no kampam sushamik shamana. Right? This is the verse. When a devotee is in great danger, he sees that danger to be the great mercy of the Lord because it is an opportunity to think of the Lord very sincerely and with undiverted attention. He does not accuse the, the Supreme Personality of Godhead for having let his devotee fall into such a dangerous condition. Rather, he considers that dangerous condition to be due to his past misdeeds and takes it 
as an opportunity to pray to the Lord and offers thanks for having been given such an opportunity. When a devotee lives in this way, his salvation, his going back home, back to Godhead, is guaranteed. And we can see this to be true from the example of Gajendra, who anxiously prayed to the Lord and thus received an immediate chance to return home back to Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam 8.332 purport. So this example of Gajendra fighting with the crocodile is very nice <laughs> and tells us how we should respond to danger. Can you think of any dangerous situations where the devotees took shelter of Krishna? Do you remember anything dangerous which happened? You never have any... Thank you, Maharaj. Yes? Maharaj, when uh, Srila Prabhupada was on cargo ship Jalduta, so Prabhupada got two heart attacks on the, that ship. And then Srila Prabhupada prayed that uh, if third time, time yes, he, he became fully dependent on the Lord, and then he was protected. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah. I had one time in... Bum Mumbai, I think it was in Chaupati, that the building was shaking and they thought, oh, it's going to be an earthquake. And everybody was worried and they all rushed out of the temple and it was in the, it, it was in the evening, you know, it was dark and they all rushed outside and they were all afraid. They thought the ground is going to open up and swallow them. And they'll all be buried and the buildings will all fall down on top of them. So everybody was chanting and they said, oh, it was the best japa they ever chanted. Right? It was the best rounds they ever did because they were so, they were in so much danger. They thought any moment our lives are going to be finished, we're going to all die. And so they were chanting intensely, intensely. So it improved their chanting, <laughs> right? Can you think of some other examples? People who chanted in a dangerous situation? Hare Krishna, I want to share a experience. When I was, when I was in Vandavan, I'm going to Vandavan. When I was in the bus, bathroom, and but the power switch leakage, the power switch leakage. So uh, at a moment, my half body, I feel no consciousness. But that time, I have chanted the Lord Narasimha, Lord Krishna, and a uh, um, few seconds, I, I have the consciousness, and uh, I, my mind become peaceful. And that time, I feel so, I feel much mercy from Krishna. That time I feel so thankful, Krishna. Uh, yeah, because I'm alone in Vrindavan, but uh, it's very dangerous. That time, because the power switch leakage, it's very dangerous. So that time, yeah, I chant along Narasimha and Krishna, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm okay. <laughs> Nothing happened. Okay. And we see examples in the scriptures who chanted the holy name in dangerous situations. Uh, Draupadi Maharaj? Yes, Draupadi chanted. She was in great danger. They were trying to disrobe her. And she just called out to Krishna very sincerely. The holy Jesus called out, Govinda, hey Govinda. And immediately Krishna came. Or Krishna came, he protected her, he manifested in the form of the sari, so that she was kept covered. Yes, another example? Prahlad Maharaj. Well, Prahlad is a bit different. He, he never sees any danger. He's so much prima, but he's so much love for Krishna, 
He just sees Krishna everywhere. He, he doesn't feel any danger. He just chants. He's always chanting. But there was somebody who, who was really in danger. Ambarish Maharaj? He always thinks of Krishna also. He was another, you know, natural. He, he wasn't just thinking Krishna. He wasn't pray, praying to Krishna to protect him, really. Yeah. But okay. I was thinking Ajamila. Okay, yes, Ajamila was in danger. He saw the Yamaduras coming to take him. He was really afraid. Oh, the Yamaduras are coming. And he called out for his son. He called out to his son Narayan. And then he remembered also. Then he remembered the Lord also. So he chanted the name. So, yes, these are good experiences to always keep the holy name on our tongue and will protect us in every situation. All right, so, read together chapter number 10, Expecting the Lord's Mercy, and share with your partner circumstances of a period in which you suffered greatly as a devotee. Wait. Reflect on how you would have dealt with this period in a more Krishna conscious manner based upon the philosophy presented in Srimad Bhagavatam and the other quotes. So, this, the circumstances of a period in which you suffered greatly as a devotee. Oh, so, it, but then we ask, how would you have dealt with it in a more Krishna conscious manner? What could we have done which would have been more Krishna conscious based on this philosophy? All right, is it clear what you have to do? Read together chapter 10. And then think of a, some circumstance in which you suffered. As a, we'll keep the same groups. You've got, we've got three Chinese ladies. Is Naraini there? Yes, Maharaj. Are you also three ladies then? Yeah? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, okay. All right. And we've got two men and two men, right? Okay, yes, so two groups of two men and two groups of three ladies. Shall so, I start the uh, uh, thing? Yeah. Breakout rooms? Shall I start the breakout rooms? Okay. Okay. Okay, so we'll give you 10 minutes, so 10 to 12, we'll be back here. Okay, ma'am.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा so sudarshan prabhu would you like to begin what did you discuss <laughs> actually we were discussing uh, in fact every other day something or the other keeps on happening keeps on happening to us sometimes you don't have money sometimes you yeah like uh, the other day yeah, i just remembered like the other day means i eat there at the uh, eat prasadam out there uh, at our kitchen and i pay monthly and it happened last month that i didn't have the money to pay okay the my, i do i didn't have a money to pay the uh, it's 2500 per month and i didn't have that money in fact so all of a sudden uh, I, i was fully frustrated now what to do where do i do? what do i do if i come at home and have same many food is there at home but i i am more interested in having prasadam out there and so somewhere or the other i was just uh, praying to prabhupad and finally uh, the day uh, I, i was supposed to pay on second or third and uh, it is been almost 10 10th of the month and i couldn't pay on a, on 11th or 12th all of a sudden i got a uh, amount of money exactly the same amount of money which i had to pay so and i just repeat the thing this just happened this month no <laughs> it can't <happen> itself <laughs> <laughs> so you got the money to pay by the grace of krishna exactly. yes so how would you have dealt with this if you've been more krishna conscious Pardon, if I could you have been more krishna conscious have, could you have dealt with this in a more krishna conscious manner based on the philosophy of shrimad bhagavatam did you fo- did you follow this did you follow 1014 yes. yes this this one we just expecting lord mars this yes, one yes yeah. right yeah you felt you were pretty krishna conscious about it huh you you yes, yes yes okay yes but but it did not made me worry that much like prior to when i was not in krishna consciousness i used to get agitated angry on lot of lot of things but now in the when right now i don't get that angry or that agitation that thing doesn't come i know that the thing when the where the time will come the thing will happen and that happens no oh, you have full faith in krishna that he's going to provide yes 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 yes, yes, yes. of course 100% percent. okay all right okay let's hear bhakta vatsal prabhu and krishna watch we discussed mainly two different types of suffering we're discussing about like different sicknesses different diseases recently we there's covid going around when we both have gotten covid so and while we were sick we sort of just lay in bed we don't really do anything and then how we could have done better more krishna consciousness we could have still managed to maybe wake up for the morning program and watch online or something we could have continued our service but realistically what we end up doing is we end up sleeping all day and then we skip our morning program we skip our services and sometimes even if we're not so sick we think oh i'm sick i don't need to go to the temple something like that <laughs> and then okay. we're also discussing different injuries we get okay yeah especially when we were younger we played different thing sports and things like that mm-hmm. so we like break a leg get different muscle injuries so many different types of injuries we get different cuts and also with that we end up stopping our service because we're injured properly we should still try to continue as much as we can okay Just patiently yeah you should continue our service okay good thank you all right and then we have also uh, subhamaya mataji and narayani mataji and sandhya sandhya's not there is she there yes maharaj all the three of us are here and we discussed um so uh, uh, what we could come up with was um, prior to krishna consciousness i was sharing how um, how i was very much affected by 
the loss of a dear one. So it was, um, even though that person was not that close in terms of relationship, it used to bother me a lot, uh, especially if someone would uh, uh, leave their body at a very young age, all kinds of questions used to come to me in terms of, you know, why this person, he was so good and things like that. And I would really be very anxious and I would be really disturbed. Uh, many a time it has happened. And uh, of course, after coming into Krishna consciousness, a lot of things have um, become very clear and it kind of reflected in um, coping up with uh, very, very uh, close relatives, my mother-in-law's uh, passing away and how we dealt with it in a very, uh, very, very different manner. Um, you know, she had a perfect end, so to say. She was a devotee initiated by Guru Maharaj and uh, surrounded by devotees at the end um, where she was constantly uh, uh, you're reminded by the devotees to chant the names and Guru Maharaj also came online to bless her. So it was like a perfect end. So it was a very, um, a, you know, very happy moment, actually speaking, that, he sh that she left the body at a very right uh, time in a perfect way. So introspecting these incidents, um, I, I would say that, you know, Krishna consciousness and especially this part on how we can expect the Lord's mercy on, you know, um, basically the art of dying, like Prabhupada says. Uh, so that's that's something which we could think of. And of course, in other matters like dealing with children, um, if they, if they, if they, because they, they are more exposed to such uh, things like, you know, they, they come up with a lot of things. So now I'm in a better position to advise them that, you know, even if it is an injury, like how uh, Bhaktar Sri Prabhu was sharing earlier, even if it's a small injury, if, if they are affected by it, we can always tell them, you know, something worse should have happened, but it is Krishna's mercy that only uh, one small injury you got. So it definitely gives a better perspective and better way to um, handle situations. So that was what we discussed, Maharaj. Oh, very, very nice. Thank you very much. Very good. Very interesting to hear all that. You discussed so many things there in a short time. All right, and uh, who's who's left? Uh, 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 little Avatar Mariji, are you going to share with us? Um, yes. Uh, it, it, it happened uh, just a few days ago. I, I before I... Uh, in in Shridam Mayapur before uh, when I live in the Nima building, I'm not uh, in health. I'm not in good health condition, uh, and I moved. I moved to Jalangi Dam. Uh, finally, uh, I I find I found a house. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling uh, very nice. It's good uh, for you know, for my. Uh, for my house, and uh, I can, I think I can, I ha, uh, it's required uh, to, uh, to, to learn, to do, uh, to do my sadhana, to do some service. Um, but uh, still, uh, but the house I live in now is sold uh, about uh, 10 days ago. The house owner um, inform, informed me to to leave this house, uh, so uh, at, at that moment, I, uh, I think, oh, it's, uh, it's so troublesome. I have to uh, waste a lot of a lot of time to pack my luggage. Uh, it will be very um, tired. It will be very tired to to move, um, and I have to find another house. Uh, it's so troublesome. <laughs> Uh, uh, so I'm I'm suffered a lot uh, in mind uh, for for a few days, um, but uh, yesterday um, in the class uh, you uh, you you told you told me um, the the quality to practice uh, to practice uh, uh, sadhana bhakti is uh, the first one um, get free from bodily concept bodily conception of life and uh, um, get rid of all material desires, endeavor only to please the Lord. <laughs> um, 
and uh, today uh, um, I, I realized more uh, that uh, this is the Lord's mercy and because um, I'm actually I'm attached to <laughs> to this place I, I think like that and uh, the Lord uh, um, let me know about this so uh, now I think uh, I will be very happy uh, to live anywhere <laughs> <laughs> Krishna doesn't want you to be attached to that place. Eh? So Krishna took away your attachment to the nice apartment. Yes, I think so. All right. So we hope you find another place to to move to. How long have you got? How many days have you got to move out? Uh, uh one one month. One month. Eh? Okay. So hope you can find another place. Do you need help? We'll, anyway, I... We'll get some devotees to come and help you move when you have to move. Thank you. And I'm sure you'll get something. Yes. All right. I don't know. Uh, nobody told me anything about open book assessments. Is this right? But you'll have to write something. I don't know if this is right. Uh, Who is in charge for the course? Is it Aniruddha Prabhu? Yeah? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. So I will talk to him and ask him about this. But it might be that you have to write these two questions. But I'll tell you tomorrow. Okay. I'll, I'll talk to him today and we'll... Confirm tomorrow. All right, so what did we do today? We spoke about different ways of dealing with blasphemy. How we deal with blasphemy? We go away, right? Go away from the place. And describe the way one can offer submission to Krishna. We pray to Krishna, submit ourselves. I'm your servant. You can do what you like. Amen? Offer submission, offer prayers to Krishna. That just let me be your servant. Then general principles from the example of the South Indian Brahmana. South Indian Brahmana serve Krishna in the mind, offering everything to Krishna in the mind. And he got the same benefit as somebody who is offering it. Actually, he was only doing it in the mind. But the person who actually does it, they get the same benefit as the person who was doing it in the mind. So we should use our mind also for the service of Krishna. And then appropriate ways of dealing with suffering in one's life. How we should tolerate. And the final quote, it's a duty of the son to depend upon his father without asking anything from him. The good son has faith that the father knows best how to benefit him. Similarly, a pure devotee does not ask anything from the Lord for material benefit, nor does he ask anything for spiritual benefit. Hmm. He doesn't ask for material benefit, he doesn't ask for spiritual benefit. The pure devotee fully surrendered unto the lotus feet of the Lord, and the Lord takes charge of him, as stated in Bhagavad Gita. Aham tvam sarva pape bhyo moksha yashyani. The father knows the necessities of the son and supplies them. Srimad Bhagavatam 4.20.31 purport. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. All right, any questions today? I asked. Are you sorry? Uh, first, first of all, I asked Aniruddha about this question which you brought up, uh, Lila Avatar Maharaji. He hasn't replied me yet. I asked him, but he didn't reply to me yet. So I'll have to get back to him again and get a reply. He, he, replied, us, he replied us in the WhatsApp group. Did he? What did he say? Yes. He said it was Ram Keli Maharaj, the place where Lord Chaitanya met uh, 
Rupa Goswami considered yeah, but it, it doesn't say that in the book. In the text it says they first met at Prayag. <laughs> you know? So. Yeah. Anyway. So, okay, if he said it's Ramkeli, then you can answer Ramkeli. That means if they ask you in the test, when they give you the closed book test, then you can put Ramakeli. Okay, good. All right, Prabhu, Surajan another question? Oh no, Sashi Khan has. Yes. Maharaj, today we discussed about Sri Ramakrishna Mahaprabhu and Sri Ramakrishna Mahaprabhu. Uh, Mr. I was wondering, should we, how we should go for it? Like, uh, we heard the definition of sadhana bhakti that, sadhana bhakti, one of the definitions of sadhana bhakti is that we execute the devotion service through our senses. And by this process, the dormant love for Krishna that gets awakened in the heart, our heart. So, is it like uh, if we go on continu uh, uh, continuing with our uh, sadhana bhakti and then eventually we will come to that platform or we have to develop that uh, uh, eagerness? On our own. Yes, you have to develop eagerness. You also have to have that enthusiasm, right? Utsahan. Enthusiasm is very important. So that eagerness or that enthusiasm should be there. Yes, you have to have that. We have to make the effort ourselves. It's not, oh, we just okay. do this, we just chant, oh, we just do. No, we have to also put our effort into it, make a real endeavour, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, man proposes, God disposes. So, we have to have that desire, <laughs> right? Okay, any other question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Narayani, right? Maharaj, uh, regarding uh, commit, uh, committing offences, Maharaj, there may be times when we may unintentionally commit uh, some offences and in that case uh, we won't be able to ask for forgiveness because we will not be aware. So in that case... Uh, Mother, you are muted. Uh, should I repeat the question? Am I supposed to repeat? Sometimes, you said sometimes we may commit offences and we're not aware. Yes, Maharaj. And in that case, Maharaj, we will not be able to ask for forgiveness um, since we are not aware of it. Uh, so how are we supposed to avoid it or how are we supposed to deal with such a situation, Maharaj? Yes, well, Srila Prabhupada taught us that every morning when we would assemble with the devotees, you know, after Mongol RT, one of the things which we do is offer obeisances to all the devotees. You know, when, Pra when Prabhupada first came to India, he brought with him a number of uh, very senior devotees from America. He brought all the senior people with him. But the problem was they were all senior and they couldn't work with each other. They all, they all wanted to be in charge and they'd fight with each other and they were young and passionate and so they would argue with each other and fight with each other and there were problems. So Srila Prabhupada said, every morning you must offer obeisances to each other. So after Mongol Arti, every morning we always offer the obeisances and in this way we nullify any offenses we may have committed against somebody. So it's important when we meet people, we always, we will always say, please accept my humble obeisances. Even you're making a phone call to someone, you're talking to them on the, you say, Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada. How are you today? Like that. You know, we talk to them. So we first of all offer obeisances. We can offer obeisances in the mind. We can offer obeisances with words and we can offer obeisances with the body. So according to the time and the place, you can choose how you will offer obeisances. If you're in the temple, if you're in the, a suitable place, you can bow down. Otherwise, you meet them maybe in a, a public place, you just offer obeisances with words or mentally. 
and that nullifies any offences we may have committed unknowingly. It's also good to serve the devotees. By serving the devotees, then you get free of sinful reactions. Maybe we've offended some, we're not sure if we've offended some. Okay, so serve, do service for the devotees. You know, distribute prasadam. <laughs> do something, do, do some kind of service for the devotees. That's also very purifying, gets free of sinful reactions. Yeah? You understand? Thank you, Maharaj. I don't think you could offend anybody, though. Right? Where are you? Which temple are you in? Uh, Maharaj, uh, I'm staying in Mayapur since last one year, but for now I've come home to Sikkim, Gantok. Oh, you're in Sikkim, huh? Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Oh, nice. You coming back to Mayapur soon? Yes, Maharaj. Maybe after a week or two weeks, maybe. Oh, quite soon. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Do we have a temple in Sikkim? Do we have a temple there? Uh, Maharaj, there's a, small, uh, there's a small center. Okay. They have a program every week? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Oh, once a week, is it? Yes, Maharaj. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Okay, good. Nice. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinasha Narsima Maharaj Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Gorbakti Vrinda Ki. Hare Bo. Jai.